quarantine has not been kind to me. <laughs> That's a terrible intro. Can't do that. Uh, all right, I'll start from here. All right, uh, it's been a while since I put out a tutorial. Um, I've got a fancy new mic and a brand new computer that I built with mostly new parts. Um, someone requested that I redo the first tutorial that I ever did, which was the low poly planets. I'll probably put a, um, an intro so you know what they look like. It's going to be mostly the same tutorial, but the sort of workflow has changed. The controls in Blender have changed. Not too much, so it should be mostly the same, but um, we'll do it anyway. So I've got a fresh scene here. and We'll just delete that to start out. And if you've already seen my last tutorial, I'll also be doing a bit of shader graph just to get that call for an L effect, just so there's at least something to learn for people who have um, seen it before. Very basic though, this isn't going to be anything um, in depth. Throw some headphones on so I can listen to some music and we'll get right into it. <clears throat> Alright, so first things first, straight into it, Shift A, I've got uh, screencast keys there in case I forget to say something. Shift A, Mesh Icosphere. We're going to go down to the bottom left, bump it up to, say, four subdivisions and a radius of like five, and tab to go into edit mode. One should already be selected, which is vertex mode up here, you see. And from there, we're just going to click around holding control. I did a few different methods, um, but I like this one the most. So we're going to hold control and then press control and plus on the numpad to expand our selection and that's how we're going to get some lakes so let me just skip through that until i get a sort of scene that i like and now we're going to click here which is our material properties and we're going to add a material and it will be assigned by default we just press plus down here and call it uh, c and we'll make this a nice Maybe a green C. You'll notice that it won't show up because unlike last time we now need to press Z and go down to the material preview. For that actually, sorry, I want to add another material. Call it beach. So press plus there, plus there, call it beach. So this will just be like the border. We'll assign that and set it to a... something complementing the sand. It's like a dark purple I think looks nice maybe. Just for our beach colour. Um, tab to go back into edit mode, now we can press I. Uh, you don't want a beach that's too thick, at least for my aesthetic. Obviously you can change as much as you want, it can go up like all the way, but I'm gonna, I think that'll be enough. And we're gonna add some depth here, so we can just add that down here. I like a, a wall that kind of pops, adds a bit more character, a bit more cartoony. And maybe bring it in a bit more. Uh, I think it looks nice. And we're gonna add another material, call it grass here, assign that as always, I keep going, I keep tabbing in and out of um, edit and object mode just because I think it looks nicer. Once we've decided on our colour, we're going to add some variation to the surface itself, so we're going to press 1 to go back into um, uh, edge mode, uh, sorry vertex mode, I always mix those up, and we're just going to control click to get a little selection like that. And we're going to scale this out, but we don't want to press S because I'll just scale it relative. So you'll see it kind of like splays out. We, we, what we want to do is press Alt S. So it goes up on its normal. So uh, this is the surface. The normal will be perpendicular to that because it's facing outwards. Uh, but before we do that, we want to go to the top and click proportional editing. Now when we do this, we'll have a little scroll wheel. If we scroll down, we can um, edit the points near it. So I'll just add some variation like that. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. What we're going to do from here is click a few high points, extend out our selection, and this can be our um, our mountain texture. So if we add another texture here, we can call this mount, the mountain, and just assign that. I think I want this to be a bit of a dark texture, maybe. Yeah, that looks cool, but bring it to a could bring it, I don't want it to look quite like the beach. I think uh, like around there. That seems like a nice colour. I don't know, actually, a bit washed out, a bit, um, a bit sewagey. Maybe a bit more foresty. Yeah, that's not too bad. I've also brought some of this in with um, just doing the same thing but in the opposite direction. And I think 
it'll look cool if I do something like that. So if I do this, and I now can assign the beach texture to that, see it adds a bit of variation. Um, maybe I like that, maybe I don't. So I'm just going to go around adding variation, it doesn't always have to be a change of colour. But just bringing the land in and out and yeah, let's see how, how we can make it look. All right, that's looking uh, just about done, I think. Got a few mountains in there, nothing too big. Got a, like a little, just a crater there with nothing. And I think now I'm gonna add some variation. So I'll just call this planet. And I'll skip through making the variation. I'll just make like a tree or two, scatter them around the place. But um, this is mainly for the technique of the planet itself. I'll leave that to you. Okay, I don't think that looks bad at all. Got a couple unique looking flowers and plants or trees or whatever. And I think it's looking quite nice. Nice bit of contrast, but also blending together with the other colors. So you got some darker leaves there. Now we're gonna worry about exporting it. So you can actually use this as is. I've been saving it as I go. And if we go into Unity, you can see that we can actually just drag it straight in. So if I go into six, you can tell that I've done this quite a bit. You can see you can drag it straight in. The colors, uh, the colors will be a bit off, but um, you can just extract the materials and uh, change each one of these individually, and just do it like that. But we're not going to do that because it's inefficient. Every material is a draw call, and obviously, the more draw calls you have, the more your GPU is doing, the slower it is. And if you're doing low poly, that is not what you want. So. We're going to export this as an OBJ instead. We're not going to go selection only because we want to do the whole thing. Um, this is why we deleted the lights and stuff before, so we don't need to do that. We don't need to delete them now. And we'll uh, uncheck right materials because we just want it to be blank. We'll go into six, which is where we saved it. So we'll just call this model for now. Obviously, if you're doing an actual project, your um, uh, naming scheme will be a lot better. So there's our, our uh, lovely looking planet. But in order to actually apply textures to it, we're going to need to make a texture file. So I'll open Photoshop here, but you can use anything you want. Paint, GIMP, um, I assume it'll work in paint if you just make a small enough texture. And instead of um, doing what you do with a large uh, object with a lot of detail where you'd paint on each individual thing, we're actually just gonna make a color palette. So it can be very small, 16 by 16, and you can color the entire planet. A lot of games even uh, don't use this. I saw a more, I saw someone else's method of doing low poly, which was similar to mine here, but they, um, instead of painting as they go, as we are about to, which is gonna copy over the colors we already have, they just had a palette full of common colors and then painted with that. So then they could just do like a whole game with a single texture, which is obviously incredibly efficient in terms of loading um, textures into the game. But we're not going to do that. So we're going to grab the pencil tool and we're going to go into Blender once more. And uh, we're just going to press Control uh, A and uh, sorry, not just not just A, not Control A, and then Tab. And now new Blender has a multi-edit mode, which used to be an add-on. You have to get externally. So this is quite nice three in face mode and we can click one of these faces with the C on it and just drag the C hex value here into a Photoshop color so we're just going to paste that there and we're going to click it there and this will give us uh, any any UVs in this spot will obviously now be green so you can actually just do that at the same time if I go into uh, UV editing and again we have to press uh, Z material preview uh, let me turn on the screencast keys here as well I'm not sure where they are I can't see them I'll just try and say what I'm doing um, so now everything is, we split it into a 16 by 16 so you see this is already nicely split into fours so we could do a 4 by 4 but 
for now anything in this little square here will be green as our water will be our watercolor so we want to put all the UVs into that so we're going to press with um with one of the water selected shift G select similar by material now you'll have all the water selected and you can just drag you can press uh, a here and scale it I'm actually gonna press U first and uh, UV project it just because I think it looks nicer but it doesn't make a difference uh, S to scale a to select, S to scale, and then G to move it into that little block. So now we have it there. And yeah, I'm just going to do that with each piece, grabbing the colour of the next one and then putting it, putting, unwrapping the UV into that spot. Uh, spot. Another thing we can do is add an alpha channel, and we can use this to define specularity. So by default, everything is black. There's no specularity anywhere. Um, but say we want the water to have 100% specularity, like so, we just do that. And maybe we want everything else to have like 20%, so everything else will be 20% as shiny as the water. And we can set this up later. And I'll show you how to do that in Shader Graph. So for now I will forget that specularity and just worry about the colours and I'll skip through this quickly. Alright, so it's all unwrapped and we've got the texture set up, specularity and all, we can save this and um, I want to save it to the same folder that all this is in, just because I'm lazy. And we'll put it in planet 6 and we'll just call it text and we'll save it as a PNG file because, uh, sorry, PSD file, which is just the Photoshop uh, file because it allows us to save alpha channels. I'm sure other ones save alpha channels but I'm lazy to figure out which. And if we go in here, we can actually do this. It should work straight away. If we just create a new material for it. So uh, create material, and we'll call this mat6. We can just, we're in the universal render pipeline. I'm not going to show how to get into that, because uh, I'm not sure how it works on the new one. We'll drag the texture map up to there and drag the material onto our planet. And you'll notice it doesn't work right away. And the reason for that is that this texture material is compressed by Unity by default. So you need to go point, uh, which is no filter, under filter mode. And you need to turn off compression and apply. And it doesn't work because I've messed something up. I, uh, I exported this before I, um, uh, before I did the UVs, didn't I? Because I am a fool. Export OBJ. There we go. So there you go. That's... Uh, that's our little planet and we could end it there, just a nice uh, cool looking world, but we're not going to. We're going to, with Shader Graph installed, I'm not sure how you do it on newer um, versions of Unity, this is 2019, so I literally just have a URP installed, Universal Render Pipeline, and um, Shader Graph installed, and also Post Processing, which I'll turn on in a second, but won't get into. So if I can, if I, I can go create... Um, Material, no, create uh, shader, there it is, PBR graph, and I'll call this should six for shader six, and uh, we can edit this in here, so this is like one of my first fortes into the shader graph, and it's quite cool, it's uh, super easy to use, hey, my hair is crazy, uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> back into it. So we'll get straight into it. It's a, I much prefer it to doing um, shader code. Shader code was endless. And um, we'll start by adding a texture. We'll just call this base map. And stuff in this corner, the properties corner, is the same as the properties in like code. These are stuff you'll pull in from outside. So you'll see this exposed in the inspector. And then we can just drag it in. So this will be something we put in from the inspector. And if we drag it out, it'll give us a bunch of helpful nodes that it can lead into. So the 2D texture map can go into input, texture, we don't need level of detail. It can just go straight into here. And we can take the RBG value, put it into the albedo, save the asset. And now if we go into material and change the shader that it's using, we can change it to use the shader graph 6. You'll see there is no change until um, once we add... a uh, this material, you'll see there's no change because um, it's working. This is how the universal render pipeline works. 
So the first things first, we're going to take the alpha channel into a multiply. And you can always just search as well. Uh, let me put these little boxes up, those little preview boxes up. And you can make another, uh, like a vector one here, drag it in and add more customizability. Customizab customizability, is that a word? Whatever. Um, definitely a word, customizability. Sorry. Um, so you can add uh, in the properties tab something to add, make this more customizable so you can change it in the editor. But I'm just going to have it so you can change it here. Uh, let me change this to uh, specular instead of metallic. Uh, specular instead of metallic, so it has a different sort of shine, which I prefer. And we'll just drag this into the specular. We press apply, save asset. We should now see that the water is quite shiny, but the um, the rest of the ground is not. So yeah, that's a nice little effect. Uh, the rest of the ground is slightly shiny, so it'll be. Uh, the water will have a specular of 0.3, whereas everything else will have a specular of 0.3 times um, whatever the grey value we put on the specular was, which I think was like like 0.2 or something. So, I don't know. It'll, it'll be a lot lower than the water, at least. You can also... Um, I also had this going, so if we put this into another multiply node, multiply this by 1.5, you can take the smoothness and change the smoothness as well. So we can have the smoothness based on um, the alpha. So now the water will be smoother than the ground. Although that doesn't make a massive difference. But I like the look of it anyway. And we go create node, or you can I think just press space. Yep. You can press Fresnel effect, silent S. We'll bump up the power to five was a good value I think I went with. Because you want it just around the edge. Just as like a ring around the outside of it. We can drag this into a multiply and put another thing here, a vector one. Oh, sorry, no, actually, we want a color here. Um, so we'll delete that. And we'll go color. We'll call this Fres Col. Let's make sure it's exposed. And we want this to be HDR so we can fully utilize the new uh, URP lighting. And we'll just plug this straight into the emission. Super easy save that and that's basically our shader done if we go into the, uh, our material you'll see that we can bump this color up sorry i'm in planet four for some reason go into our material we can bump this hdr color make it match the like a nice water spot um i think that looks nice and we can even bump up the amount of it with a HDR increase like that and yeah I'm going to turn on post processing just to get an even nicer effect see I just it's just, it's just a bit of color grading and uh, I think that's some depth of field in I'm not too sure we can turn that off for this in this case so yeah some bloom color grading nothing too major if we press play we can maximize the game view and see what it looks like. That's not too bad at all. Let me actually go one step further. Add a constant rotate to the model itself. Say like 10 and we'll rotate this model on the Z like 10. And there we go, that's a very nice looking planet if I do say so myself. So what do you guys think? Have I done a good job? Hopefully, oh man, I've been recording for 40 minutes, hopefully I can cut this down. I'm trying, I'm, I'm, I'm praying this is less, uh, less lengthy than the first time I did it. But even if it's the same time, at least I've got a bit of shader graph code in. So yeah, that's the whole process. Just follow along or I think my old tutorial might have been easier to follow i had it all written down i'm probably gonna be too lazy to do that but yeah i think it's quite nice super quick super efficient you can make a bunch of planets like this all with their own unique color scheme and you can always add stuff in the detail maybe just take chunks out just get creative with it and yeah that's what we've got that's our low poly planet thanks for watching and have a great day